a moment uh, of silence for uh, Elaine Manlove. She was our commissioner of elections and she and her husband lost their lives on Tuesday election day uh, on their way to Wilmington trying to assist uh, in the election. So if we could just, and the funeral is today. So if we can just take one moment of silence, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, today we're going to hear from our sub chairs um, as to all the great work they have done uh, in the past month or so. We uh, will also be voting on the minutes from our previous meeting. And hopefully uh, we will be able to set some dates or time frames for uh, our final, well, not our final meeting, but at least getting some uh, sub subcommittee reports in and seeing where we need to go. We also, I believe, have the public, which will be on this particular uh, session and uh, we'll also be able to uh, submit questions and hopefully we will be able to answer the questions they have or be able to use that information to input on some of our subcommittees. So uh, without further ado, I'll have introduce our other co-chair, Mr. Cleon Cawley. Good morning all, happy to be here. Um, looking forward to hearing everyone's reports and um, planning for the uh, next meetings to come with regards to the task force. If we'd like to introduce ourselves, those who are on. Uh, start with the, the chairs, please. Okay, I can take attendance. Is Ray Avery Jones here? Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Simone? Here. Vincent Oliver? Richard Smith? Spencer Price? Anas? Here. Wendy? Good morning. Good morning. I'm here. Good morning. Uh, John Stevenson. Good morning. I'm here. Kimberly Chandler. Good morning. Good morning. Sean Garvin. Dana Cobb representing Secretary Garvin. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, Saran K. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Keith Hunt. Cassandra Johnson. Thank you, Cassandra. Good morning. Good morning. Larry Austin. Jane Hovington. Carmen Jordan Cox. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Kathleen Jennings indicated someone was setting in for her. And Melissa Minor Brown. Uh, her Good morning. Eileen, is Melissa here or is that Riley? That is me, uh, Representative Bolden. Representative Ryder Brown is unable to attend today. All right. Uh, cool. Representative Cook. Representative Johnson, Kendra. Good morning, present. Representative Dorsey Walker. Good morning, present. Good morning. And Representative Namdi Chikwotra did indicate he would be coming on late for an interview currently. Kevin Hensley, Representative Hensley. Senator Lockman. Senator Morning. Brown. Good morning, present. All right, that's the attendance. Thank you, we'll go to the minutes. I can't hear you. We're one person short of quorum, so uh, we will hold off on voting on the meeting minutes. Okay. All right, so we'll start with our subcommittees. Our first subcommittee is the Economic Opportunity Committee. Good morning, everyone, and to our chairs, thank you very much. 
through all the other subcommittee members. Thank you for a job well done. The Economic Empowerment Subcommittee, we've met on several occasions. We shall need to get permission to add to our committee. We added two additional people since the last time we met, so we shall need permission from our overarching body, Madam Chair and Mr. Co-Chair, if that is okay with you. Representative we, Walker, um, what does that bring your number to? We are currently at 16 where we shall stay. 16. I, be, I don't believe we can bring it to a, a vote until we have a quorum. So okay. uh, when we receive another member, then we'll just bring it to the to vote. Thank you very much. What we ultimately have been doing is we have been uh, one of our meetings, we met with the state treasurer to talk about procurement opportunities for black wealth managers. We, the next, our next meeting, we shall be meeting with the building trades and speaking about opportunities for blacks to gain access. We do have some people of color currently in the labor unions, but we want to ensure that we're creating generational wealth. And that's one of the things that we're really we're striving to do with the economic empowerment opportunities. And in the midst of all of this, we had a black business open on the west side of Wilmington, Go Vegan Philly. They actually had a business in Philadelphia and they expanded to Wilmington. And with the help of our Madam President, Hanifa Shabazz, City Council President Hanifa Shabazz, as well as the administration, we were able to help them get outdoor down, excuse me, outdoor dining. And we're just really excited about what's actually happening with the subcommittee. We have excellent subcommittee members who are bringing a wealth of knowledge to the subcommittee, have an understanding of the procurement process for the state of Delaware, and we're looking to continue to grow. And we're grateful for this opportunity. If there are any questions, I shall turn it over to our chairs. And thank you for this opportunity to share the work that we are currently doing. Thank you, Representative Dorsey. Uh, I have another uh, organ as well, another business, small business that's going to be opening up too uh, this month on at Fourth and Market, which is a soul food restaurant. So I'll make share that information with your committee. And yes, ma'am. But we shall definitely highlight them and be present if we can be. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Madam You're Chair. Welcome. Thank you. Our, our next committee is Health and Welfare Report. Good morning. Thank you, uh, Representative Bolton. <clears throat> On behalf of the Health and Welfare Committee, we have met thus far on October the 8th, October the 29th. Our next meeting is scheduled for November the 18th at 5.30 in the afternoon. During our last meeting on October the 29th, wait, yes, the 29th, uh, the members were charged with a little homework assignment mm -hmm. to be ready to uh, submit during that meeting. Their homework assignment asked this, as it relates to health and welfare and disparities among people of color, what are your three top priorities? Needless to say, we received so many wonderful areas that should be evaluated. Um, some of the priorities, and I will not give you all because there is a very long extensive list just to give you all an opportunity of some of the topics that the members shared. We have behavioral health, we have maternal health, we have housing and food insecurities substance abuse, training on implicit unconscious biases for healthcare and social workers, a review of laws that helped in creating the disparities among black people, uh, a look at areas of need for individuals who have disabilities, and to wrap it all up, uh, the charge for accountability. And, accountability in that 
once these areas, well, first they've been identified, and once the work has begun to chop away at the disparities, how do you hold individuals accountable to ensure that this is not an exercise, just an exercise, that it is indeed um, related to outcomes and what we produce? That was, I thought, maybe one of the most interesting uh, things added, and I thought that I would add that last. What I will also share is this. Uh, what we learned as a result of receiving everyone's top three priorities is that there are a number of areas that overlap, and we imagine that we will have um, overarching uh, uh, subcommittee topic areas, and then uh, topics that will fall underneath because there are so many um, areas that individuals put forth. And in addition to that, we also recognize that some of the areas that the members have shared with us will most definitely overlap within other subcommittees. And what Representative Minor Brown and I will do, once we get through all of the topics and once we group things accordingly, we will then follow up with other subcommittees to, uh, to let them know what our topics are and to make sure there is no overlapping and work that has already uh, begun so that we are not, um, you know, overlapping an area if another subcommittee is already uh, working in that area. Again, our next meeting is scheduled for November the 18th. We have a remarkable, diverse, intelligent group of members, and we are indeed enjoying working with them and looking forward to the outcome of, of this subcommittee. Thank you very much for your time and your consideration. Thank you for such a great detailed report, uh, Representative Johnson. Was there any uh, recommendations or concerns regarding Medicare or Medicaid with the deadline approaching for sign up? Off the top of my head, Representative Bolden, I cannot say for certain, for certain whether or not that was mentioned. What I will do is I will add a note uh, for myself and I will go back to our extended list of priorities, <laughs> see if it, is, if, if it has been mentioned and um, then add that, okay? Thank, Thank you. So much for Thank bringing you, that to my attention. <laughs> my pleasure. Uh, infrastructure and environmental senator. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so the infrastructure and environment subcommittee has met twice. We first met um, on September 29th, I believe it was, and then our most recent meeting was on October 28th, um, at which, which time we've reached uh, sort of our, our first full membership. Uh, don't uh, We will see if we'll add any additional members, but at this time, apart from me, we do have nine members, including uh, Dana Cobb with Denrec, Marlena Gibson with the State Housing Authority, Wendy Henry with Dell Dot, Simone Philpotts representing the Urban League, Abby Samuels with the Community Legal Aid Society, uh, and then we have a, a number of folks representing sort of our, our counties across the state. So we've got uh, Marlene, Dr. Marlene Saunders with Sussex County. Uh, we've got Willie Scott and Dan Young from Newcastle County and Harold Stafford from Kent County. So we're starting off with a very strong group of individuals um, with a lot of interest and understanding in the work that we are doing. We spent our, our first meeting really talking about, you know, what do we think we need to know, areas that we think we need to focus on really to, to lay the groundwork in terms of information gathering, making sure that we are, um, you know, connecting with the right voices in the community to really understand the scope of issues under infrastructure and environment, um, and, and just really digging into the data that we have available to us, the data, um, you know, and what that then might reveal about the data that we don't have available to us so that we can really be able to define what folks are experiencing in terms of housing, uh, transportation, utilities, and environmental justice disparities so that we can then prioritize based on that data, how we wanna proceed in terms of making a recommendation. So um, for our October 28th meeting, we 
had a, a wonderful presentation with information gathered um, and presented by um, our, our Senate policy staffer, Caitlin Del Colo. She gathered information from a number of our members and we even had a segment of the presentation made uh, by Willie Scott. And we covered a lot of, of issues. We talked about um, home ownership, families in subsidized housing, uh, the value of homes. We really started to, to hone in on, on some of those different aspects of it, uh, just so we could see what the issues were. Um, you know, the homeless population dimensions, these are all in a PowerPoint that folks could see um, on our uh, task force page as a record from our October 28th meeting. Um, we were also starting to, you know, very immediately, I think the touch points with other subcommittees began to come up. So we were not only looking at home ownership rates and the appraised value of homes um, and how that sort of breaks down by race, but also, you know, it, it immediately lent itself to discussion about median income and um, poverty levels, education levels, and, and so on and so forth. So we really had um, a wide ranging discussion beginning to paint the picture and it was really just a draft. We hope to have a, an even more home, honed in um, and refined presentation that we can continue to share with all of you what we're discuss, discuss, discovering and discussing. Um, and then in terms of environment, we were looking at things like lead risk exposure. Um, we were um, looking at asthma visits to the ER, cancer rates, all of these different types of things that we know um, impact our health and have to do with the scope of the subcommittee, uh, the way we zone for um, heavy industry and toxics that are released and some very technical things uh, that, that we're all still wrapping our minds around, uh, the locations of brownfields and so on and so forth. And so we're beginning to overlay these maps and see, um, see the patterns. And of course, you know, a lot of this work has been done before and it's very important to us as a, a subcommittee to recognize that and to gather what has been done. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a, a reading list. If anyone else uh, in the public would like to join us, um, we have, um, there was a significant DENREC um, environmental justice study done in consultation with the community, I wanna say in around 2000. Um, and we have links to all of these and uh, PDFs of these. So that's our homework, uh, really to study up and to, to better understand just what is the scope of, of what particularly our low income black and brown communities are facing in terms of access to quality housing, valuable housing um, on par with other segments of the community. And also where does where we live um, have an impact on our access to work, our access to health, and so on and so forth. So we're really just developing um, an understanding of of the problem specific to Delaware, specific to all three counties. And we will continue to do that work um, in order to inform our, uh, our recommendations, hopefully in the near future. And we are of course soliciting additional recommendations from members of the public in terms of any uh, particular dimensions of data um, and reports and things like that, that they think that we need to be considering as we do that. So that's, that's where we have been so far, I think we have a great group. I think we have some really interesting information coming our way, and I think we will continue to refine that over the, the coming months. Thank, thank you, Madam. Thank you, Mr. Lockman, and uh, thanks for the great report. All thus far is very informative. I, uh, just a couple of questions. Looking at us statewide, have you, your committee looked at anything dealing with manufactured housing or uh, trailer, trailer camp facilities? We have not specifically pulled that information in, but I think that is a great uh, a great area for, area for us to be looking. So I'm gonna make a note and uh, we will just pull that in with our other housing areas of study. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, congratulations, Senator. Two oh. congratulations. She was just engaged and gonna be married and also you're already with. <laughs> Good month. In the Senate. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Our, our next report, I'm not sure whether or not a representative Kowocho is here yet? No? All right, so that would be uh, safety and justice. So we'll come back to that report. But meanwhile, we'll move on to the next session. I believe Representative Johnson uh, raised her hand. Oh, sorry, Representative Johnson. 
It's okay. Thank you. I was trying to be subtle. So uh, <laughs> you know, like, yes, <laughs> I just wanted to, because we have amazing people who work with us all of the time. As it relates to your question regarding Medicare and Medicaid, I actually wrote it down on my paper and I received a wonderful text message providing me with the information. Um, essentially, it is reported that Simone, thank you, Simone, oh, great, Simone. Uh, the uh, Metropolitan Wilmington Urban League actually had that on her list. And what she, uh, what is specific is that she mentioned expanding state Medicaid and instituting a Medicaid buy-in program. Um, as it relates to schools and hospitals and, and other things. So um, it was uh, discussed. And uh, Representative Bolton, if you would like more attached to that, please follow up with us and we'll make it happen. To my fairies who keep me updated with all things and sending me text messages so that we can um, provide people information in real time. Thank you. You know who you are. <laughs> Thank you so much, Representative Johnson and, and Simone as well. Paul, you want to go next? Uh, yes, I believe we can, um, since we're going to circle back to safety and justice, we can go to the next agenda item. Hold on, we, we have another hand raised. Hold on one second. Do we? Where? See, I don't have the full screen. Let's see. Rep. Dorsey Walker. Um, okay. Hand is raised. Was there something you wanted to share? Yes. Thank you oh, so much, Madam go. Chair and Mr. Co-Chair. I inadvertently forgot to mention that we do have an economic empowerment subcommittee on Thursday at 4.30. And I did not count myself in that number. So that number is actually 17. And I, it, we shall not add any more. Once we have a quorum, if we can vote upon that, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, and let me just verify that we have not reached a quorum yet. Okay, that is correct. We have not reached a quorum yet. So I would say if, if we don't before the end of the meeting, um, continue business as usual, and those things we need to vote on, we'll just um, add them to the next meeting's agenda and vote on them then. By, so by saying that, unless anyone is objecting, I'm saying, Obviously, those members still stay engaged into your subcommittee until we have the official vote. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. So next up, we have the timeline for the final report. And essentially, uh, myself and Representative Golden met and had a conversation about this. And what we want to make sure occurs is that all subcommittees have enough time to have their conversations and their engagement before we get into uh, the actual finalizing of the report. But we also wanna make sure that we leave enough time that we can have a robust discussion on all recommendations. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking for, and um, Representative Bowman, keep me honest or um, make sure my dates are correct, but we're looking to start the meetings on each subcommittee around August of next year with your finalized reports, meaning between those times, at any meeting that we have, you can bring up recommendations yeah. for us to discuss. And then we'll, those recommendations will be added into your final report. And then we'll schedule around the August, September time of next year, a meeting like this meeting dedicated to your committee, where we would go through your full report and give it the full uh, attention and needs with all of the recommendations. And that would also, we're hoping that would also leave enough time that if any of your committees need more than one meeting, we could do that as well. So we wanted to make sure this was an open discussion before we finalize that exact uh, timeline and date. But we want, so we want to literally hear from the committee members and see what your thoughts on that is. As of 2021. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I see Senator Lockman's hand. Okay. Yeah, sorry. 
Um, still waking up on a Monday morning. I wanted to clarify. So is your expectation that we have our recommendations in August and then we will proceed to have individual meetings focusing on each subcommittee from there? That is the goal, but some of you will have many recommendations. So throughout the next year, we believe that we can bring those sub recommendations to this committee and have a robust discussion on each of those individual recommendations. The meetings after August will be really for the full report with all of those recommendations and any additional recommendations. Okay, so be prepared to maybe bring draft recommendations prior to August. Absolutely. Okay, final recommendations in August, got it. Absolutely. Very and then I thought I saw Representative Johnson's hand as well. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Cauley. Uh, actually, part of my my question or comment was related to uh, Senator Lockman's comment, because my question was, if by chance uh, we have recommendations, draft recommendations that we would like the committee to um, discuss and vote on prior to August, if it would be allowable that we provide those draft recommendations at that time. And what I believe I heard you say, and you can correct me, is the answer to that is yes. The, the answer is absolutely yes. And uh, if we could, if we just get those recommendations in enough time to put them on the agenda and to make sure that everyone on the committee has a copy of that recommendation so that we can have a robust discussion on it. Absolutely, uh, wonderful, I completely agree. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions, thoughts, concerns? If not, what we'll do is we'll finalize the schedule. Representative Walker, did you raise your hand, Dorsey Walker? I did, Mr. Co-Chair. And I believe the question may have been answered in Representative Johnson's question. But my question is around legislation. If we actually need to propose legislation and pass it, for instance, what we found is there are actual codes that are preventing people of color, in particular black people from getting procurement opportunities. If we need to change that prior to August, can we maybe call for a special meeting or something or how, how shall we work so that we're working in conjunction with one another? If there is a, if there is a meeting that is already scheduled, so we, we obviously plan to have meetings throughout um, this time. So if there's a meeting that uh, correlates with the time that you would need to do legislation, then you would bring it to that meeting. We would just get it on that agenda, bring it to the meeting prior, and then we would work it. What we, what we, I think what we're trying to accomplish is to get through the majority of these recommendations before August of next year. Uh, the worst case scenario, at least, and I don't want to speak for Representative Bolton, but for myself, would be we get to August and we're seeing all of these recommendations for the first time. Okay. We would much rather throughout the course of this next year to have seen the recommendations, commented on the recommendations, thoughts on them, um, did whatever we could can do to tweak and make stronger if need be. Uh, and then in that August time frame, we're really looking at the full reports then. So what is the full report for each committee? And hopefully 90% of your recommendations have already went to this body. And we're just talking about that 10% that's outstanding. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I'm not seeing any hands at this time. So if, if there's no more questions, what we'll do is we'll work on um, the official timeline that uh, corresponds with what we just discussed. And we'll make sure that that gets out to every committee member um, so you have a chance to view it. If there are any issues or any things that you uh, see might be a problem with this timeline, uh, please reach out to myself or, or, or Representative Bolden and just let us know uh, and we'll we'll address that accordingly. I was also notified that we do have a quorum so we could circle back to uh, the motion on the minutes and then the motion on the members for the committee. Okay. We have a quorum that is uh... Representative Namdeh Chikwocha here. Is he on? 
No, I, I think what occurred was uh, there was a miscount of uh, how many folks we needed to meet quorum. So I believe we've, we've always had a quorum. Okay, so we can vote on the minutes, but we can't vote on the uh, subcommittee reports yet because we still have one missing. Yeah, we can, we can vote on the minutes and, and then we have a vote outstanding uh, to increase the number of members uh, for Representative Dorsey Walker's Dorsey Walker. committee. Okay. So uh, is there a motion on the minutes? Motion to approve the August 26th meeting minutes. Second. It's been motioned or second. Uh, any uh, questions or concerns uh, with regards to that? Any questions on the minutes? Hearing and seeing none. Uh, vote to approve the motion. Uh, if you could, if your picture's on, uh, the easiest way, I should just raise your hand for us. It looks unanimous. Motion's passed. Yes, and I'll take a motion for the Economic Opportunity Subcommittee, members extending to 17, I believe. That is, that is correct. Representative Dorsey Walker, do you want to make the motion? Absolutely. Motion to extend the number of members for the Economic Empowerment Subcommittee to 17. Second. It's been moved and second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Sorry, looks unanimous. Okay. I'm wondering, Caitlin, can you see everybody's hand? I mean, you have the full screen because we, I don't have it. We were just uh, verifying that um, we were able to see everyone's hands. So we, we are. So motion has passed. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I believe we can I, I believe we can vote on the subcommittee um, adopting the reports of the subcommittees that have been given. So and sorry that we're taking these out of order. Forgive us. Uh, so can I have a motion to accept the economic opportunity subcommittee report? Motion. So moved. It's been moved by Lockman and Representative Bowden. I believe you're on mute, but I believe you second it. I see the nod. All those in favor? Is there anyone against? No. Okay. Motion is passed unanimously. Can I take a motion to accept the report for the Health and Welfare Subcommittee? So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? second. All those in favor? Second. Is there anyone opposed? So it looks as that is unanimous as well. Motion approved. And for now, uh, motion for the infrastructure and environmental report to accept the infra infrastructure and environment report. So moved. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor? Unanimous as well. All right. Uh, is there any questions for the public? Um, the African American Task Force is going to be hosting public listening sessions in the coming months. Uh, these listening sessions will be designed to uh, gather public comment um, as well as to engage community stakeholders. 
Uh, this is something that the Law Enforcement Accountability Task Force has done um, within the scope of their work. And so we're sort of modeling our public listening sessions after theirs. The first public listening session will cover the subjects of the economic opportunity and infrastructure and environment um, subcommittees. And they, the first uh, session will take place on Wednesday, January 6th at 6 p.m. Uh, we are working on setting up a Zoom registration so that people can register for that event. Um, there will also be a public listening session sometime um, later in 2021, which will cover the issues that are the subject of the health and welfare and safety and justice subcommittees. Um, so please stay tuned for that information. It will be posted on the General Assembly website, as well as the public meeting calendar. Does anybody have any questions about the public listening sessions? Caitlin, if um, subcommittees have not scheduled a session, uh, do they reach out to you directly to do so? Yes, they can. Um, and my understanding is that we would be um, looking to schedule the second session during one of the legislative breaks, um, of which there are several in 2021. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. If not, we'll move to the next agenda item. Are there any questions or, or comments uh, for task force members? Did anyone hear the question? <laughs> Any questions from task force members or the committee members? And we're clear on the dates, uh, in, for, especially for January 6th for the public listening session. And then the General Assembly is out during the entire month of February. So that's when we were looking at another uh, public listening session. Uh, other than those that are on uh, joint finance, but the, the bulk of the, the General Assembly is out in February, the month of February. Perfect. I think we're good. I don't see any questions. Um, pardon me, Editor Tukwocha will be joining the meeting. So we will... Not yet, but I am monitoring the list. He has just come on. I have to promote him to panelist. Okay, I believe Rep. Chukwocha is now on and has speaking privileges. Good morning, Representative. Good morning, Rep. Bowden. Apologize for my delay. Uh, we, we appreciate you being on. Uh, if you, uh, we have gone through the minutes and voted on them as well as subcommittee reports up until yours. Uh, safety and justice, are you ready or available to give a report at this time? Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Rep. Bolden. Uh, I'm just as an update for the safety and justice subcommittee, we've had held a couple of our meetings uh, it's going pretty well. We're you know, really trying to figure out our, our goals and objectives as far as outcomes and deliverables. A few things that we have planned, there is going to be a, a, a listening session. We're gonna take part in the, the listening tour for the African-Americans. And there's also going to be thinking of in terms of uh, the, the justice aspects, social justice, and also the, the community violence. Representative Frank Cook and I, are going to be making a, a having a, a small meeting with a, a group of representative members from our community who've been involved in, in, in gun violence 
and just to get that information and bring that back to our, our subcommittee and then continuing to work with our, our various members of the subcommittee again to, to work on deliverables everything from community uh, implementation plans as far as safety and then also working with the, the various departments and, and department of justice regarding the the criminal justice and juvenile justice uh, reform bills that we feel are definitely a part of changing things and then working to get a, a, a presentation for our, our subcommittee members regarding the guns uh, and, and handguns, illegal guns in our community. So those are a few of our, our areas of, of main concern. And our, our um, next meeting is upcoming um, next week. So we look forward to picking up our conversation again, uh, working toward our, our deliverables and outcomes. Thank you, Representative. Uh, uh, just a question, looking at uh, justice and those that are coming out of prison, have, has your committee looked or is there anyone on your committee from the HOPE Commission? There, there isn't. Uh, and as far as there, there isn't currently, and I, I will definitely make that uh, recommendation and, and reach out to them today to get some to be involved. Okay, thank you. Because they've, they've been you. very active and they've been posting uh, different uh, scenarios on their website uh, regarding the success that they're having with those coming out of prison and how they're able to uh, get them informed with agencies for housing, jobs, etc. So thank you so much. Definitely. Great, Great recommendation. Great thank you. Great information. Are there any other any questions regarding the Safety and Justice Committee? All right, are there any questions regarding the, the uh, safety and justice uh, committee report? If not, I'll take a motion to accept the report of the safety and justice committee. So moved. Second. It has been moved and second. All in favor, raise your hands, please. Any questions? All right, accept it. And I'll go back to our co-chair, unless we have, do we have any questions from the public? No, I'm seeing a note that uh, a Jones had raised their hand. I don't know if everyone else is seeing. Oh, that's for the public comment section, perfect. <laughs> okay. So, I, and I think next up is the public comment section. Perfect timing. So uh, at this time, we'll take comments from the public. Okay, I will uh, unmute participants one at a time. Um, because we have so few people um, who are able to give public comment on the Zoom, and because we have lots of time, um, co-chairs, I'm wondering if we could do away with the two minute limit and just allow them to give their full comment. Okay. Um, so Marlene Jones, I'm going to unmute you and you can begin your public comment. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, Representative, is it Nambi exactly if the um, public will be able to um, listen into their meeting that's scheduled for next week regarding uh, safety, public safety? Yes, it, yes, ma'am. The, the meetings are, are hosted. Uh, there will be a Zoom link as well as there is an opportunity to uh, listen through the uh, page for the, um, can't remember the name of the domain that hosted, but there is a link and we'll, if you uh, would send me an email, I will make sure you get that, the appropriate information that, that's needed. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. If anybody else would like to give public comment at this time, please use the, the raise hand function on Zoom. I'm not seeing any other hands raised. Okay, seeing and hearing no other uh, 
hands raised, we'll move to the next agenda item, which is closing comments. Representative Bolden. Um, if we can just go back to the uh, public comments for just a second. Uh, those of you that may be on and listening that did not uh, choose to speak at this time, please note that you can still uh, mail, email your comments to African American Task Force. It's all spelled out at Delaware.gov. That's African American Task Force at Delaware.gov if you didn't get the opportunity uh, to speak or at this time. Okay. Uh, final comments. I just want to thank everyone for participating uh, this morning. We have a lot of work that we have to do uh, going forward. Um, I, I think we've gotten on to a good stand at this particular time. Uh, from your reports, it's just excellent. Some of the things that you're currently doing in the subcommittees that you've set up within subcommittees as well. Uh, the things that I mentioned today are dealing with Medicare, Medicaid, and uh, uh, manufactured housing, as well as uh, trailer facilities. I think these are all things that are going to be addressed to be inclusive of the state of Delaware as a whole and our three counties. Uh, as well as uh, I'm looking forward to getting more information and hearing about specifically what uh, Representative Chihuahua mentioned, I'll get it right now, the eventual, um, regarding um, black on black crime. We are seeing a lot of that and I'm sure these are things that, be, that are being addressed as well as helping those that are coming out of prison through the Hope Commission, getting them the uh, availabilities and housing, jobs, et cetera, et cetera going, going forward. forward. I am so grateful for the team and for every member that is on, uh, is a part of this African-American task force. Some of you I know very, very well from working with. Uh, those of you I've, I'm just meeting and learning about, but I'm very thrilled with the uh, task force that we have. And I'm looking for great things coming out of this whether it's legislation or improving the code in which we have for the state of Delaware, uh, et cetera. So thank you so very, very much for everything, for taking the time. And hopefully we will be able to meet in person uh, eventually to have one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations after the meeting, as well as being able to see and network with one another. And um, Chairman Hawley said, uh, Said that, said he, that would he would feed, feed us, us whenever. Whenever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. So it, thank you. It's it's uh on the it's in the minute, so I, I I'll have to be held to that. <laughs> One second. All right. All uh, the the only thing I will add is um one uh we know how large that each of these subcommittees your scope is and we know how much work is going into it and uh, we're very appreciative of all of the work that is being done i will say as we're going and we're having these conversations um, let's continue to think toward how do we get to the, those deliverables how do we get to those recommendations and how do we bring those recommendations here and what form they'll be in whether it be legislative, uh, what actions do we need to take to make that occur? And I think it was uh, Representative Dorsey Walker that brought up earlier, we also have to be cognizant of the timing by, by which we're bringing those recommendations to us so that we can have action sooner rather than later. So um, obviously it's, it's a lot of hard work to be done, uh, but we're thankful that we have the team to do it. Uh, and, and if there's anything that you need from myself or Representative Bolden uh, on this journey, please don't hesitate to reach out, call, text, uh, whatever it takes so we, so we can make sure that we're giving you uh, all the assistance possible uh, to assist you in all of your subcommittees. So again, thank you all for all, all your hard work. Thank the folks on your subcommittees and the community for their assistance as well. Uh, it's much appreciated. Uh, I will accept a, a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. It's been moved. Second. Second.
Second. And, and multiply second. All those in favor? <laughs> All right, see you all. Be safe. Madam Chair, thank you, Mr. Chair. Great day. Thank you, everyone. Great day, everyone. Thanks, everyone.